Hey guys, welcome to another Raid Shadow Legends video. Um, plenty of stuff coming out in the last few days here. We've had loads of new updates, various different tweaks. Um, so yeah, this is just a video covering all the new stuff. We've got loads of new champions, almost too many I think. Um, I'll go through that in a bit as well. But um, let's just crack on with this quickly first. There's a new update uh, affecting the Doom Tower actually. Um, now I have to admit, I don't really like this. Um, it says since the release of Doom Tower, Looking for ways to improve or tweak it while we're still working on the next full rotation. We have made a few changes to the current Doom Tower bosses to make them a little less easy to beat with gimmicks and a little bit more strategy oriented. So I think that makes zero sense. Um, first of all, it's not easy. It's easy for the elite small portion. And I know I made a video when I completed Doom Tower and I thought, you know what, maybe it was a bit easy. But then realistically, if you look at my account, it's pretty stacked. I mean, I'm probably in a very small minority of people. Um, I mean, I don't have the best account by any stretch of the means, but I've got a good account. But, um, you know, most folk in my clan and stuff, they're still struggling to beat normal, let alone hard. Um, yeah, it's, it's not, it's, I don't think it's too easy. Um, and the guys that are this sub status that are going to kind of, blast it out in sort of nine ten seconds and stuff this is pretty rare it's, it's not going to be a, a common thing but this is the one that really bugs me it's saying a little bit more strategy oriented but they've taken out if you look here they've actually taken out strategies they've taken out the enemy max hp strategy they've taken out the poison strategy effectively which are strategies so if we're not to use those strategies does that mean another strategy is okay i don't know um, it just slowed it down, so it definitely is harder, that's one thing. I was actually struggling with the level 20 Nether Spider, whereas before I just blasted it out. So um, The Nether Spider now actually does the attack um, Brood Feast first, which is the one where I think she spawns the actual spiders, um, which does make it more difficult. And three of the current Doom Tower bosses, which is the, the Frost, the Nether and the Magma Dragon, now have a passive skill that basically means enemy max HP stuff can't exceed more than 10%. So like Cold Hearts, um, Septimus, I believe anything, any of the big boys that used to do all the damage for the bosses basically aren't as useful now, which is kind of sucky because people probably spent a fortune on silver and, you know, resources building these guys up to, to have like two runs of Doom Tower then it not work anymore. Um, two of the current, Doom Towers have a new passive skill, saying turn meter reduction doesn't affect it as much, 50% uh, less effective. So the Nether Spider was really useful for that. I have to admit, I didn't use it in Frost Spider, so Frost Spider doesn't matter too much. I'm very glad I didn't do this to Scarab King, because then it would have been basically unplayable. He's <laughs> hard enough as it is. Um, so yeah, that's it. I have to admit, I'm not thrilled about this. I don't think it's really necessary. Um, if they are making it harder, the best thing they can do though is at least increase the rewards because I would have said the amount of effort it was before, like, although the bosses maybe at the end of like, you know, the, the stage 120 Frost Spider wasn't the hardest sort of content in the game, the floors leading up to it were pretty damn hard, you know, like floor 113, 114 up. Especially when you get all the uh, the Tormans, the crazy high Tormans, all the frost kind of stuff. It was really difficult, really difficult. So, um, yeah, not thrilled to death about this. But, uh, yeah, so that is the new update for there. We've got a couple summons draft that's basically over, I believe. Let's see, is it still on? Yeah, it's still on here. Uh, I am not summoning anything for this. It's like all the shit couples, basically. The only one you want is Siffy and Rotos, and I want to pull Siffy. If it was a Siffy in here, I probably would pull my voids, but I'm not going to pull for any of these guys. Zavia I am missing, but I don't desperately need her. She's really cool. But yeah, I wouldn't, I'd, like I say in all my other videos, I wouldn't normally summon in any 10 times. It's just really unlikely unless you really, really want that champion and you've got a shitload of, uh, of shards. But uh, yeah, so that's that. Not going to do that one. going to boycott it. Right, so here's the main highlights for 3.3. We've already gone through the fitting room in a previous video because we were given that information early. So if you haven't checked that out, please. It's a fairly cool like, sort of quality of life addition to the game. So pretty pleased about that one. But we have got a ton of new champions and 
rather than go through every single one because the video will be like an hour long I'm just going to go through the legendaries and one of the epics because I think he's pretty good. Um, if you guys want to check out, I'm going to link this page below. This is just on Playrium's forum, uh, so you can read all this yourself. But this is to get my reaction to these guys. So I have looked through them before. I'm not not doing this blind. Um, so this guy is going to be the fusion champion. Um, he looks really cool. He looks really, really cool. This is just his avatar, but I've had to look at his skin. He's, he's a really cool looking champion. He's pretty good. Um, Sacred Order, so he's got an A1 that attacks twice with a 30% chance of placing decreased defense. Now, he's going as the, the Valentine's basically fusion, so he's got a, a, another um, legendary that he teams up with, who's another one in the, the list here. Um, so Countess Lex, Countess Lex it's called, yeah, will team up and join the attack if they're on the same team. That's pretty cool, you know, I think that just means they're, they're always going to do it, so that's pretty decent. That can actually go up to a 50% chance of decreased defense. Um, then the A2 attacks one enemy will ignore increased defense, strengthen an ally protection buffs. Which is pretty, pretty cool, rather than ignore defense, it just ignores the buffs. Then revives and random ally with 40% HP and places a shield buff on them equal to 20% of their max HP for two turns if this attack kills an enemy. Um, also places a shield buff on this champion equal to 20% of their max HP for two turns if this attack kills an enemy. Um, yeah, so that's pretty good to be honest. Um, it's kind of like a beefed up version of, what's his name, Altans. Um, yeah, it's... Yeah, it's good. What's his A3 again? It removes all buffs from target under Veil or Perfect Veil buffs, then places a 25% weakened debuff on enemies who will have Veil or Perfect Veil buffs removed, then attacks all enemies. Also has a 75% chance of placing a stun. Yeah, that's... I have to admit, I think people are maybe sleeping on this. I think this is crazy. Um, now, don't get me wrong, when you're talking about Veils, you're pretty much talking about Duchess, let's be honest. Um, and Duchess is a tough champion to strip at the best of times, but if you could build this guy, I, I don't know what his base stats are like, but if you can build him reasonable speed and insanely high accuracy, that might just be enough. I mean, forget about attacking, forget about damage for this guy. This is a ridiculous ability. You know, if you can take those bait veils away, um, then you're putting weaken on them, then you're stunning everyone, 100% chance as well. That is pretty crazy. Um, but you're going to need like... Seven eight hundred accuracy to do it, so it's gonna be quite tough to be honest. Um, fills this champion's turn meter by three percent every time an ally is hit. Yeah, that's so it's kind of like a what's her name, Molly Tankard's ability on a passive. That's quite cool. Uh, decreases incoming damage by 25 percent if the attacker's attack is lower than this champion's. So that's another cool one. It's kind of like damage mitigation, similar to Candrophon or something. Um, the only issue is if you do want this to land and you want the high accuracy, you're maybe going to struggle to get this here. And this is quite situational, you know, you need to use it against the right champions. So it's not like saying, oh, I'll just put it at 400 accuracy and put his attack up so I can use this. But then you're maybe not going to utilize the perfect veil part of this, which is a big part of it. Because it says places a 25% weaken on enemies who have veil or perfect veil removed. So, I mean, even just placing an AoE stun is still a really good ability, don't get me wrong. But you really want to be able to do all of this at once, and that is pretty strong. Cool, so this is the, that is the fusion champ. Um, he's an old school fusion. Um, all of the champions in here, apart from the legendaries, are going to be involved in the fusion, I would imagine. Um, so that's going to be a bunch of new champions, which means loads of potions, back to the grind. I have to admit, I do prefer the fragments, but it is what it is. Um, pretty cool champion, definitely better than the last one. I don't think he's as good as like an Iron Brago, Drago, what's his name? Um, or like a, oh, the ally attack one, I always forget her name as well, the orc. But um, yeah, I don't think he's as good as them. But I think he might be pretty good. I'm going to have to play, I, I would like to get him, and I would like to play about with this Light of Sanctity because it's it could be pretty useful in the arena actually, if it hits reasonable or if I'm able to do the stun and remove the veil quite often. Um, but we'll, we'll try it out anyway. Right, we'll zoom down to this guy. This is Nogdar the Headhunter. I think it's Nogdar the Headhunter. Is that how you say it? Um, after, I'm not massively keen on this guy. Uh, I'll have to see him in place. He's one of those champions that 
reads a bit funny. So he attacks one enemy and heals his champion, um, grants an extra turn if it kills an enemy. So it's got a ton of book damage here. Um, incidentally, he doesn't look like he needs many books, only 10, which uh, in the current <laughs> circumstances with Raid, that's pretty low. Because what was this guy actually? He's like 1, 2, 3, 4. He's like 5, 13, is that right? Yeah, that's, that's not even that bad. Some of them are up at like 16 and stuff. So at least this guy gets 40% damage increase in his A1, which means he might hit hard actually. And he's an attack champion. He's got an AoE in his A2 after attacking, sacrifices HP, then places two continuous heal. The HP sacrifice will happen even if it kills this champion. So I'm hoping this slams. If this slams, I might be totally wrong. This guy might just be an absolute killer. But um, yeah, it's, it seems a bit strange. He's got ally attack in all battles. There's nothing there. Um, he's got this A3 that sacrifices HP as well. Equal to 50% of this champion's max HP. Then equalizes HP levels with the target enemy. Um, then the HP levels of both his champion and the target enemy will be brought down to the level of the one with the lowest HP. Um, doesn't work against bosses, that would be overpowered. Five turn cooldown when booked. Mm, I'll have to see this one in play. This is the only cool thing, he revives his champion with 50% HP and the turn meter, which is good, when killed if all other allies are alive. Um, does not work if there are any multiple Nodgar, Nogdars? I can't say that one on the team if there are three of your champions. I'm not sold on this guy, I'm not going to lie. I'll have to see him. If, if this A2 does slam, maybe. I mean, it's getting 30% damage increase as well, and the A1, but I'm not totally sold on him. Now, this next guy, though, completely different story. This guy looks <laughs> insane. I think he's one of the coolest looking champions we've had for a while. Um, I've only seen his avatar, I haven't seen his skin. I think he's going to look really cool. Dwarfs is needing something else as well because Dwarfs is a little bit not lackluster. There's some of the best champions in the game in it, but there's not that many to choose from. Um, so this guy's an HP champion as well. Again, we need more of these. Spirit based. He's got an A1 that attacks one enemy, heals by 15% of the damage inflicted. If this champion has 50% HP or less, then fills his champion's turn meter by 15% if he has more than 50 HP. 50% uh, HP, okay, so he's got good damage increases on that as well from books um, Then he attacks one enemy in his A2 and inflicts bonus damage equal to the difference in HP level So the way this reads is between this champion and the target and it's 1% damage for every 1% of difference So I'm assuming that goes either way whether it's up or down whoever is which is pretty cool to be honest Because that means you get the bonus regardless Inflicts bonus damage equal to the difference in number of buffs on this champion and the target and that's plus 10% damage per buff So again, if that does go like You know, you would think it would be only buffs on you versus buffs on them But if it's just the difference and it's 10% damage This could be crazy. You know what I mean? Like really really crazy um, But it's, a, it's only hitting one enemy the main thing is going to be this A2, uh, A3, sorry, AoE's 80% chance of stealing two random buffs before attacking, then places a hit, an extra hit on enemies that have any buffs left. Um, yeah, I think this guy might be pretty good. Um, this is just reminding me of Trunda, you know. Um, obviously, you don't really want to steal two buffs because you want to hit them again. Well, maybe you do, maybe in some content you want to steal the buffs, but. In like an arena slam, this is ideally a two hitter, and if it does hit as hard as I think, then it's going to be beastly. Um, and then he's got this crazy passive as well. Uh, places a block damage buff on this champion for one turn at the start of each round. So he comes straight in with a block damage, um, which is insane. You know, if you want to build a go second nuke team or something, perfect, absolutely perfect. Um, and his active effect blocks incoming damage and places block damage buff on this champion when they receive a hit that would drop their HP below 30%. Um, four turn cooldown in this one, but he's getting that at the start of the round and from the passive effect and the active effect is going to kick in. So he's going to be a nightmare to kill actually. I, I really do think this guy is going to be a top, top champion. Um, We'll just have to see how his multipliers are, that's the only thing. But HP champions, if they have a reasonable multiplier, Obviously, they've got a massive pool of HP to go from. Well, I hope he will. Um, so it could be doing some serious damage. And they're survivable as well because they're HP. So 
this guy has the potential, I think, to be really, really cool. Uh, great champion by the looks of it. Right, we've got this guy Cardiel here. Um, he's quite a strange one. He's a Void uh, Legendary, so tough to get. Sacred Order. I think a lot of these are Sacred Order. No, just, just the top one here, Sacred Order. That's uh, Orcs and Dwarfs. So he's got an A1, attacks one enemy, heals all allies by 7.5% of their max HP. Also places a true fear debuff for one turn if the target is a champion from the demon spawn, undead hordes, or knight revenant. Um, so the, the, you know what this reminds me a lot of. Um, I know a lot of people don't really seem to like this, but I actually like it a lot. This reminds me of Magic the Gathering. So you've probably seen in my other videos, I was a huge um, Magic player for many, many, many years. Um, spent a fortune on the game, but. Uh, yeah, they had a lot of this, you know, because you know it would it would be based around lore more. So your kind of your white knights would do damage against zombies and stuff like that. So obviously he's a sacred order, pretty holy looking guy. He looks pretty like he uh, likes the finer things in life rather than demon spawn undead hordes. He doesn't like them, so he's going to do uh, extra things to them. So I do quite like that. I know it's situational, but you know what I mean. It's a uh, it could be definitely used somewhere in like arena you can pick and choose who you're doing it if you've got a really bad wave and doom tower that's got a bunch of these stuff you can pull him out he's going to have a bit more bit more luck with him um he's got an a2 removes all debuffs from all allies then places block debuffs and revive on death on them the revive on death cannot be removed um so this here this is a three turn cooldown angel song is just a massively well not massively but it's definitely a buffed up version of Sky Touch Shaman, who is already top, top tier in Arena. So the only thing she has, she's a much better healer, I think. I mean, this guy heals in his A1, but it doesn't seem she's a very good healer. Actually, this guy might be pretty damn good as well. I think this guy might actually be good because he's just a direct replacement for her because the Revive on Death now can't be removed, which is really good. Um, block debuffs can, but it's exactly the same. It removes all the debuffs, then puts the block debuffs on. And then, oddly enough though, he goes on to his A3 and he's basically got Fakra and the Fats A3, but it's it teams up with him as well, so it's a 30% increased crit rate and damage, crit damage, sorry, buff on all allies for two turns, then teams up with all allies to attack target enemy, decreases the cooldown of the skill by one turn if an enemy is killed by this attack, so it's a four turn cooldown when booked, can be a three turn, which is pretty crazy. If you kill someone, which you, you should do with this. Um, I'm just going to go through the passive first before I comment on this champion. Because he's got a strange kit. Allies receive 20% less damage from this champions. No, sorry. Allies receive 20% less damage from champions from the demon spawn, undead hordes, or knight revenant. I mean, that's pretty big. That's a massive damage mitigation. So stick him in against Kandrophon, who's a nightmare right now in arena. There we go. We've got a good champion. Um really good champion against them whenever an ally attacks has a 15 percent chance to team up and join their attack um and that actually books up to where is it 30 percent which is quite a lot actually um this champion will attack with their default skill always joins flame tongue sissy of flame tongues attacks that's me it must be the next one um if they're in the same team which is pretty cool can only join an ally's attack once per turn. Oh, okay, so you can't spam it. That's a shame. Um, probably would be overpowered though. Um, Cardinal will not team up on allies when they counterattack. Yeah, yeah. So that makes sense. So you can't play about with that. I don't know about this guy. He's got an increased speed in all battles, which is always good. He's got some insane kit. So this is better than Factor and the Fat. And to be honest, you only use Factor and the Fat for this ability. So it's He's the best ally attack in the game, let's be honest. Because like Fakran the Fat and Longbeard were tied for me, but the difference was because Fakran didn't attack. But this guy attacks as well, so he's not that you really need the healing if you're doing a blender comp, but um, you know, if you're using him in clan boss and he's doing extra heals and stuff, that's always pretty good. Um he's that's just a, a beefed up version of Fakran, and this is just a beefed up version of uh, Sky Touch Shaman, but they're two conflicting champions. You wouldn't ordinarily run an ally attack team when you're trying to, you know, cleanse and. Hmm. It's a strange one, you know. 
maybe if this didn't do revive on death at all and had like an extra turn then that would be insane because you could basically have a blender comp that didn't need immunity gear um that would have been really really cool probably a little overpowered maybe but you know you could have just been cleanse and block debuffs no revive on death none of the rest of the text there grants an extra turn straight into this and then boom it would have been insane for blender comp actually but um alas not to be um i'll play i definitely i mean if i pull him i would definitely definitely be happy um i think he might be pretty good i mean i would just replace sky touch shaman i guess with him if his heals are reasonable um also really handy against like i say candrophon yeah i like him He's, he seems interesting right moving down the list there's loads to go through here guys so i'm not going to go through like i say all the epics we'll just do the, the legendaries um let's get through this one fairly quick countess lex she's pretty cool she's the the one that teams up with our where is he this guy here astralon so that's the uh the fusion champion that we're all going to be able to get and countess lex is the one that attacks with him so um she where's his a1 again Countess Licks will team up and join the attack if they're on the same team. So if he does an A1, he's putting a 50% chance of decreased defense on an A1 that hits twice. And she attacks one enemy two times with a 50% again chance of putting 25% weakened down. So it's a fairly decent chance of getting weakened and decreased defense on something. But it's not AoE, so it's not... I mean, it's A1s, I suppose. You can't really complain. Um, they're attack champions, so they might be doing damage as well, which is good. AoE's on the second ability here. Attacks any, all enemies three times. Each hit has a 100% chance when booked of place and decrease speed. And a 100% chance of decreasing the turn meter. So that's pretty cool. That's always a, a handy ability. Similar to, um, what's her name, Sylar, who's a, a, a void epic. Um, I think Sylar's is a little better, maybe 20%. Um, and the a3 is an aoe as well 100 percent when book chance of placing block cooldown skills also decreases the cooldown skills of all ally skills except as champions by one turn and um, that's a really good skill um you're kind of getting not as powerful as kaimar but like a renegades kind of ability alongside block cooldown skills which is always crazy you know warlord's standout skill is that really five turn cooldown um yeah, it's, it's pretty good. I mean, we've got even folk like um, Lugan the Steadfast. He does like an AoE version of this where he puts block cooldown skills. Um, but I like the fact that it decreases the cooldown of your skills as well. That's something new. So she's got two passives here. One is to do with Astralon. So removes one random debuff from Astralon and this champion at the start of each turn. Only available if they're in the same team. So very, very similar, if not the same, to Sifi and Rotos. Um, and... It's, she also has a channel woe which fills the champion's turn meter by 5% each time an ally receives a debuff. Um, that's pretty cool. I mean, you don't really want to be taking debuffs. Um, she's attack based. She feels like so much more support based than attack, to be honest. So it's a bit strange. I, I hope she's not super squishy because then, you know, if she was maybe a support based with defense, she would seem a little bit better to me. Um, but we'll have to see how she works. Maybe I might I might be wrong. So Sissia Flame Tongue, this is the one that's going with this crazy guy, Cardinal. Um if you look here, basically whenever she attacks, he'll join it. So she has got an A1 that hits three times. Each has a 15% chance of increasing the duration of HP burn debuffs on the target by one turn. Um cool, so this is gonna be a pretty decent spider champion, I would think. Um attacks all enemies or Sorath. Uh, has an 80% 100 when booked chance of placing weaken also 80% chance of decreased defense for two turns if there are at least two enemies under HP burn debuffs then instantly activates any HP burn debuffs on each target and decreases the duration of those HP burn debuffs by one turn that's yeah we're going to come back to that in a second because i think this champion might be pretty crazy as well so the a3 places an hp burn debuff on this champion for three turns then aoe's has a 100 percent chance when booked chance of placing an hp burn debuff on all enemies for three turns so that's pretty crazy for three turns um i was waiting for the aoe hp burn i couldn't remember where it was grants an 
extra turn if the HP burn is placed on all enemies. Um, see, that's nuts. So you could place this on. Um, now the passive again. Oh yeah, she's got increase. I forgot about that. Increase accuracy in all battles. That might be better than you think, to be honest. Um, increases this champion's speed by three and damage inflicted by three for each ally and enemy under HP burn. If Cardinals in the same team, all allies will heal by 3% of their max HP from HP burn debuffs instead of receiving. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty nuts, actually. Uh, if you could get them in the same team, that is crazy. That's a lot of healing that's going on there. Yeah, I mean, she can put on, like, crazy amount of HP burn, grants an extra turn, and then instantly activates them all, um, which is really strong. I mean, this is going to be nuts for Spider. I mean, it's going to make Spider so easy. Granted, you have to pull a Void and a, and a... Well, actually, no, you don't even need the Void. You just need her on her own. She'll do it all herself. Um, she seems really good. I'm not, I think she's going to be really, really strong. I think she could be strong everywhere, to be honest. Doom Tower, you could even use her in Arena. Um, yeah, she's going to be a beast. So as you can see, we have uh, got an absolute shed ton of champions to go through here. Most of these guys are all going to be in the fusion, or I'm going to say most, all of them. This will be your fusion champions. Um, they're actually pretty cool, some of them. I would have a look. I'm not going to go through every single one because the video will be way too long. I'm going to link the description below the uh, the website here so you can, guys can go and check this out. Um, there's some pretty cool ones. The only one I'm just going to go through quickly, and this is one purely because... I think a lot of you guys might be better than going for Astralon, who's, he seems good, but I don't think he's going to help a lot of people as a count sort of progression champion. But this guy here will, if you don't have Arbiter, this guy's pretty strong, to be honest, for an epic. So he's Spirit. Um, he's got an A1 that puts Leech on, which is really good. Um, Leech is really, really good for a lot of content. It's like a kind of pseudo lifesteal for, for all your champions. Um, He's got an A2 that AoEs and puts decreased defense down, though we know like there's so many champions that are strong because of that, like in a Rares War Maiden, you've got, um, oh, there's just two loads. You've got a Stag Knight, you've got the new guy, I can never remember him, the Orc. It's just a really strong ability, to be honest. So, But then he's also got this A3 that fills turn meters of all allies by 15%, but then decreases the turn meters of all enemies by 15%. Um, so it's kind of like Lysandra's type of ability. Um, but then if you ascend it, it fills the turn meters of 15%, decreases turn meters, then grants an extra turn. So it's like a kind of combination of Lysandra slash Seeker there. And then you can go straight into an AoE decreased defense. So, you know, to, to climb an arena, this guy would be brilliant, I think, because he's doing so many jobs. He's doing your he's doing your uh, your boosting, your speed boosting. Then he's going into an AoE decreased defense. He can also be your speed lead. He's got uh, increased speed in all battles by 19%. So this guy will just go into so many teams. And he's putting Leech down if you want to use him in PvE so you can get loads of health back. Um, fair amount of books. Looks like 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So about 13 books is quite a lot. But um, yeah, I think this guy might be worth going for over the actual Fusion Champion for a lot of people. So be worth keeping that in mind. If you don't have Arbiter, or one of these kind of champions. Uh, but just at the bottom here quickly, I've gone through most of this stuff, like the clan boss keys and all this kind of stuff. Um, one thing that I didn't go over in the last video that I didn't realize was happening was we are getting a little bit of a change to tag team arena. Um, people aren't really playing it very much. I think they're just collecting the weekly rewards for gold bars and that's it, because there's not a massive incentive to play it, to be honest. Um, there's no real competitiveness at the top, so people aren't striving to get there, which they could really do with doing. So the weekly rewards you get have been decreased quite a bit, but and you need at least 10 fights that week, I believe, the way it reads, to claim them, but they'll increase the number of gold bars per victory to compensate for it. Um, but then they're expanding the item pools for each tier in the bazaar, so they're going to put in charm chests, player avatars for each tier, uh, fragments of rare void champions required to fuse Broadma, so that's pretty cool. Uh, Broadma's a fairly decent champion for anyone new, um, so that's going to encourage people into tag team a little bit more. I still feel at some point they need to have like a like a platinum tier, you know, some sort of competitiveness to actually make tag team arena something that's worth playing. Uh, at the moment, it's not really. People were pushing for the avatars, but that was it. That was the only reason people were doing it, I believe.
So anyway guys, that is the video. Sorry it was a long one. Um, it could have been a lot longer if I went through all these champions, but I decided not to put you through it. Uh, I just wanted to cover those legendaries because they are pretty cool. Um, I do feel maybe Raid is releasing maybe too many champions just now. Um, I know that sounds silly, but sometimes like it's a little bit overwhelming because um, we've just got a bunch of new champions and a bunch of good ones and I'm still wanting to kind of build them all up and play with them and do content for them but um, suddenly we're getting a heap more and they all look really good don't get me wrong but um, you know I've got a ton still to build up so it's maybe a little bit much um, I wouldn't mind seeing some lore in here actually that's one thing they're releasing some really really cool skins and cool champions but It'd be good if they were released in a more kind of lore based fashion, similar like I said earlier to Magic the Gathering. So when they release sets, they have like a kind of story behind each set. Um, I think something like that for this game. In fact, I'm going to do a video on that in a few weeks. Um, I've got a plan for that one. So I'm going to come up with a concept of how it would work. Um, if you guys want to see that, please leave in the comments below because I think it would be quite cool for the game just to have a little bit of lore and, you know, even just have like a little dialect box on all the champions that explains a little bit about them. Um, that would be pretty cool. So that's it, guys. Any questions, please leave in the comments below. Like and subscribe to the channel as always. It really helps me out and have a great day, guys. Peace.